opening up the Chrome notebook and we're going to go through the startup sequence on this device. Now as you saw it booted up pretty quick. Alright now it takes you to a let's get started page. Now if you watch my other video you'll know that uh, the trackpad is very responsive and it actually clicks like uh, some modern day laptops such as maybe a uh, uh, MacBook, MacBook Pro. Um, now the let's get started page basically wants you to select your language and select your network. So English is my language and I'm going to select my network right now. Okay, I'm logged into my network and it takes me to the next screen here is Google Chrome OS Terms. It's a terms of service and of course I'm going to agree to this because if not I can't use this. Uh, the little radio button down here says optional help make Google Chrome better by automatically sending usage statistics and crash reports to Google. Of course I'll do that because they gave this to me for free. I'm going to accept this terms of service here and it's checking for updates. Now it says please wait while Google Chrome OS installs the latest system updates and the computer will restart when the update is complete. So we'll join back here when that's done. Now one thing to note here, in the lower left hand corner, you can't really read it here, but it says Google Chrome OS version 0.9.110.9. So that's the version that comes with the device. We'll see if that changes when the um, update is complete. It should. Okay, first thing I'm going to notice right here in the bottom, the version has changed. Uh, it went from Chrome OS version, whatever I read to you just a second ago, to Chrome OS version 0 0.9.128, and then it looks like an AND sign, 10.12.1. Zero three. So that is the new version that's on the machine. I'm sure that's going to change. Remember, the first thing I've got to say about this, or actually I should have said about this, is that this device is beta. Like I said, you're not going to. This is not going to be retail until sometime in mid 2011. Okay. So anything you see in this video or any other videos, this is a beta machine. So it's like if you tasted a cake when it was half baked you know it's not totally done so this is just for the the mature people who can actually know that and you know take this information as the progress on Chrome OS and see if it's something that they might want to actually you know use in the future this is not something that's fully done right now so it's not to be judged, it's just to give you an idea of what the direction of Chrome OS is. So with that said, it says it gives you a sign-in screen here. And um, you put your email address and your password in here. So you could do that, or at the bottom here it says skip sign-in and browse as a guest. Now, I'm going to do that because one of the interesting things about this machine is that, as with many other computers, you can have multiple users on it. But with this computer, you have a guest account, and the guest account is fully incognito mode, or in incognito mode, and so the, all the browsing history is not saved, and it's deleted when it's done. So you could have a friend come over if they had to do banking or any you know sensitive passwords that they they might use. Uh, they could go into the guest um, you know mode on this or the guest account and sign in, do everything there, and then all of their you know passwords and everything will not be stored. So that's really cool. So we're going to actually sign in as a guest right now because I don't want to put my my personal information in here right yet for this video. So we're going to sign in as a guest. And here we go. Now, if you notice up here in the upper left hand corner, it's got a little incognito man up there. And obviously, you have your new tab. Now it says, You are browsing as a guest. Pages you view in this window won't appear in the browser history uh, or search history. 
and they won't leave other traces like cookies on the computer after you sign out. Files you download and bookmarks you create won't be preserved. Okay, and then it says learn more about guest mode. So that is the um, welcome screen you get basically with this. And the clock is off, so I'm going to have to change that. But uh, you have uh, up in the upper right hand corner up here, you have a little uh, bug report thing. It's actually a little bug button. And then you have, if you've used Google Chrome before, you know the, the wrench here in the upper right hand corner. It's uh, customize and control Google Chrome, which is basically all your menus that you need are right there. So the first thing I'm actually going to do, because it might be of some interest, is see how you change the time on this, because it is not correct. Open date and time options. This uh, obviously is California time. I'm East Coast time. So um, we're just going to change this. Or can I? Maybe I can't because I'm in the guest mode. Okay. Okay, now that up here, when I clicked on that, it uh, brought up a system menu, which enabled you to change the date and time, I guess, if you were in a non-guest mode. The touchpad sensitivity you can, be, can be adjusted here. Your language can be adjusted here. And the accessibility features here as well. We're going to actually go down. This, this is, we got into the settings here, so we're actually going to go down the list here. Uh, the next thing is internet, which should give uh, all the, you know, open wireless networks there. I'm going to skip that. Uh, the next thing is basics. Uh, basics on startup. So this is basically your... Um, uh, preferences on startup, I would imagine. Uh, you either open the home page, reopen the pages that were open last, uh, open the following pages, so you could have a, a list of pages that are always there when you open it up, which is actually kind of cool. That way it'll save you time from actually being, you know, going to the sites that you need. If you want to do that, and I'm probably actually going to use that because every morning when I wake up, there's certain sites I visit, so I'm going to be using that option on there. The next is home page, so that's obviously setting your home page. And then def default search, you can use Google, you can use Yahoo, or you can use Bing. Obviously, I'm going to use Google. Uh, that's what I mostly use. I do use some of the other ones sometimes, but uh, if I want a little variety, but mostly use Google. Um, next thing is personal stuff. Uh, your account, you can put your picture there. Require a password to wake from sleep. Um, which is probably a good idea if you're going to have multiple users. Um, passwords, offer to save passwords and never save passwords, which is, is, a, is a good thing to have. Form autofill and then themes. So you can actually put a theme on here. Now the next one is under the hood. Under the hood, you have your privacy settings here. You have your network, which... Uh, is pretty self-explanatory. Translate, offer to translate pages that are not in the language I read. That's clicked on. Downloads, you have chosen to open certain file types automatically after downloading. You can clear these settings so that downloaded files don't open automatically. Web content, change font settings. And then security. Okay, and then you have a reset to defaults there. And then the next thing is user and uh, users, I'm sorry. And it says enable guest browsing, which I'm doing right now. Show usernames and photos on the screen sign in, which I will do. And restrict sign in to the following users. So you can actually do that. So it's all your basic settings on here. Now up here, you also have a, uh, just as an overview here, in the upper right hand corner, you have your wireless signal and then your battery strength there. And then you have your little incognito man over on the corner here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to a simple search here. And we're going to go to YouTube. Uh, the keyboard is a chiclet style and it actually is very comfortable to, to type on. It feels very solid. Uh, the screen is a matte screen here. It's not glossy. And actually the entire device is, is matte too, so that's, that's good. Let's go to YouTube and see how fast this uh, brings it up. Nice and snappy. Now the one thing 
about the, the pad, the track pad that I just noticed, is that you can just tap it to move where you want to go, or you can actually physically click it. You can do one of two things. I'm used to just tapping, so I'll just do that, but you can actually click it as well. All right, we're signing in, signed into it, and that was pretty snappy there. We're just going to click on here and go to My Videos. And we're going to play one of the videos to see how it all plays on here. And uh, the latest video I have is Building My PC. There's actually going to be more videos in that series. Um, it's just a lot of uh, footage to go through and edit. So you have your basic on here for your web surfing. You have your basic two-finger scroll down to just move the, the, cur the uh, page up and down. I assume there'd be a side-to-side, -side too, if, if the page was uh, too big. But uh, I haven't encountered that yet. And uh, let's just pull up one of these videos to see. Alright, we're going to pull up my video of syncing Google Chrome bookmarks and extensions over multiple computers. Um, because I think it's kind of appropriate here. So click on it. And it's bringing up the footage okay, here. This is a quick tip video on how to sync your All right. bookmarks. Now let's see how the audio PCs controls work here. Using Google Chrome. When you now hit the, the first up, thing you, want to do is obviously you get a little uh, and go bar here, and you hit down, you get a little bar for your volume. And go down to options. And then we're going to hit okay. the gonna get an mute options. button. So that mutes it right away. Hit the mute again, it stays muted. And then you, and you see hit the, the first plus button, it goes back up to where it was. Um, okay, that's how that works. Now, we're actually going to try so some of these controls so here. The and we're going to pause this video so it doesn't get confusing with my voice playing twice. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to use these buttons up at the top. We're going to use a back button on the keyboard itself here. The back button... Okay, brought me back. The forward button should bring me forward. The reload button should okay, reload. Okay, and then the next button is full screen. So PCs. the full screen button is actually interesting because, like I said, they designed this laptop so that the actual top row of buttons are almost like the buttons on the top of your browser, okay? So, you don't need the buttons on the top of the browser anymore, okay? If you go full screen, let me just show you that again. Okay, you got your full screen up here, you have your address bar up here, and you know, your tabs and all that. And if you had your bookmarks bar up there, which I will put when I log in because I do that, um, you would have, you know, a chunk of stuff here up on the top of the screen. And remember, this is a 12-inch screen here. So the top buttons here actually serve as a lot of what you have there. So you, you have a back and a forward button and a reload button. Uh, this full screen brings it to full screen here, and you don't really need all that because you actually has, have the physical buttons down here, which is pretty interesting. So we're going to go to this tab, and we're going to hit the next tab button. Now, for some reason, that's not working. Maybe I'm using it wrong, um, as Steve Jobs would say. Or maybe it's just not working right now. Again, this is a beta. So um, the next tab button, I, uh, I'm going to have to go back to that and see if, uh, if, if there's some user error here or if it's actually just a case of, you know, again, this is beta software or, or beta, you know, beta software. This will not be coming out probably for another four or six months. And then, of course, you have your brightness controls. I'm bringing it dimmer or brighter. And uh, then I have the power button on the extreme right-hand side. We're going to press that. Okay, just kind of went in and out the screen there. Um, I'm going to hold it and see what it does. Boom. Gone. Disappeared. Powered down.